Welcome to your Journey to Joy podcast. I'm your host, Moira Gorski, and I'm on a mission to help you find joy in the chaos of life. As a retired nurse, multi-passionate entrepreneur, and mom of four adult children, I know what it's like to feel the overwhelm of it all and wonder if and when the joy will show up again. And I've learned it's up to us to go find that joy. On this show, you will hear inspiring stories from those who have overcome all kinds of life challenges, tips on how to stay healthy and vibrant during the ups and downs of life, and simple ways on finding joy in your own life. Let's face it, life is messy, yet when we travel together on this journey, support and encourage each other along the way, that joy starts to show up again. I'm so excited to lead you on this journey of you to find the joyful life that you deserve. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. And it is me again. Um, I'm going to try to do this a little bit more often. Um, But I am coming on here, Moira Gorski here, to tell you that I am six days post-op of my lumpectomy. And I feel like I want to come on and share a little bit more about the procedure and how I'm feeling. So many people have reached out. And can I just tell you, like, I don't know, I do know I'm overwhelmed with the amount of love and support that you have all sent me. My daughter's amazing and put up a nice progress report, if you will, without me knowing on Facebook. And besides the post that I put up as I was heading downtown to surgery and the amount of love and support that has come is really uh, remarkable. And um, I know it's because I've connected with all of you, but I just want to say thank you for all of that because it does not go unnoticed. And when I will continue to stand on this platform and say that when we share our stories, we offer people this feeling of hope that they're not alone. And I continue to see that each and every day as I step through this cancer journey that I'm on. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep it coming. Keep it sharing. I mean, I've heard from people that said, Hey, I saw your podcast or I listened to your podcast and um, I'm reaching out because of this, or I sent this podcast to a friend or here, here's a group that you might want to be a part of. It's so, so helpful for all of us in this world. So last Wednesday was my lumpectomy day. And, um, I got diagnosed at the beginning of October, and as many uh, that I know, um, kind of, I feel, rushed into things, I took my time, and I got a couple opinions, and my second opinion I really liked more than the first, <laughs> and so I chose to go with her, and um, I live in the Chicagoland area um, in the western suburbs, and she is um, a physician down at Northwestern, which coincidentally is right next to where I used to work as a nurse years back when I graduated from nursing school, graduated from Hope College, and I had a a bachelor's in nursing. I got a job at RIC, which is uh, now called Shirley Ryan Ability Lab, but it was called Rehab Institute of Chicago. And I had worked rehab nursing um, in a, in my training, you know, in a month-long practicum or something like that, and I really liked it. So um, I was able to get a job there, and I was thrilled. I worked with paras and quads and stroke victims and um, helping them create a new normal in their life. Um, And again, just a little side note, but just interesting information, I believe. I believe that what I have a chance to do with um, wellness and everything that I'm doing now going through, um, I'm helping to create a new normal, which is better. When you have a spinal cord injury, a lot of times your new normal is, most times your new normal is less than 100%. It's less than what you had before. When we take control of our health and we do things that are life-giving and and um, we can create a new normal for ourselves. Did you hear that? We can create a new normal for ourselves and it's better. It's better than ever. <laughs> and I feel like that just continues to be a theme here that... Um, that I am creating a new normal. I'm stepping into something new in the new year. Um, it's uh, it's exciting for me and it's empowering and I want it to be empowering to you too. So Wednesday, you know, it's kind of a little frustrating. They don't call you till the day before, but they did call me um, the day before to tell me what time I needed to be downtown and it was noon. So it gave me a chance to, um, you know, do all the stuff and get ready and not have to rush downtown. Um, and, um, 
So in the morning, um, I got ready. My husband was uh, going to drive me downtown. So we both got ready. I just, <laughs> my girlfriend who was at the health club working out, she goes, why aren't you at the health club? We always do legs on Wednesday. You're going to come to work out. She was kind of kidding. But um, maybe I could have gone to work out. But I decided to take it easy, take a little bit of a extended morning time, and just get ready for what was what was coming, and um, mentally as well as you know, physically. So I have created a joy list, joy playlist on Spotify. So when I went upstairs to take a shower, I put that on. Um, I will put that in the show notes here so that you can listen to that. But it's just different songs that I've put together that I really like and that bring a lot of joy to my life. So I did that. And I listened to that as I got ready. And, um, you know, put some things in a bag, because I was like, I'm not eating. And you know, by four or six tonight, I think I'm going to be super hungry. So I prepared for that. Although I have to tell you, I wasn't particularly interested in eating um, too much on the way home. Uh, But that's what we did. We headed downtown and uh, checked in. And again, I was super impressed with Northwestern. Very smooth. I mean, you walk through this. If you've ever been there, it's a huge hospital. It's so busy. I mean, you have to you should plan about 15 minutes from the time you get to the parking lot to be able to get in because it's so um, it's so busy. But anyway, you kind of walk through. We got into a different entrance, and so we had to walk through this big place where people were eating and congregating and waiting. And it's just like, it's interesting. I was thinking in my head, wow, I'm going in for surgery, but I'm just walking through like, I don't know, a little cafe where people are eating and and life goes on for them and... I'm going in for a surgery that I didn't expect. You know what I'm saying? It was interesting. I just, I get very contemplative. So headed upstairs, checked in. And I think really the kind of the worst part of it was the first part. You know, they take you back and you get changed and stuff. And because I have a tumor and this might be too much information, but this is how it all works. At least the way that she does it. They uh, place a wire into your breast that goes to the tumor. And then once that's placed and you're up in surgery, the doctor can follow that wire and find the tumor, which is pretty cool, right? That's what you want them to be able to find the tumor and take it all out. But the way they do that is, at least with me, they had to do that with a mammography. So all these women out there, you know, right? Um, They put me in a chair um, that had wheels on it, but then, you know, they rolled me into the machine and they have to take a picture, squeeze you, and then place the wire, anesthetize your boob, if you will, and then place the wire into, feed it in there, if you will, and find the tumor, and then let you go, and then squeeze the other way and adjust it. And everything was good until that time. You know, I'm sitting there and mine is on my left side, almost in my armpit. So just imagine I'm jammed into the machine. I have my left arm to the front of me, but over to the side, like over to the right side so that I can stretch so they can get to that area. And the women were so nice. It was really, really great. But it was kind of like all of a sudden it hit me. I was like, oh my God, this is just, this is hard. It's hard. You're there by yourself. You're there in this room, this really small room with this big machine and these four people that are like, you're doing great. And like a tear just you know, dropped out of my eye because I was like, oh, yeah, I'm okay, but this is hard. This is hard. This is something that I didn't imagine that I'd ever do. And so that was over. And then we waited for some imaging or things to be done before they took me outside and um, into the hallway. But, um, you know, the gals were nice and they're trying to pass time, the radiology techs. So they're chatting with me and I'm chatting with them and said I was a retired nurse and blah, blah, blah. And then, um, I said, yeah. And they said, how did this happen? And I said, well, yeah, I went in for my 60th, you know, birthday update, doctor's appointment, and here I am. And the one gal said, better than 26. And I looked at her and I said, are you seeing younger and younger women here? And she said, you have no idea. So I'm just, that moment I felt very grateful for the fact that I wasn't having my breasts removed. I was having a little lump removed. Um, I wasn't past stage one. I mean, I'm grateful that uh, this didn't hit me when I was pregnant. I have heard of women that are pregnant and they find out they have breast cancer. Like, imagine that. I mean, really, it's terrible. It's terrible. So I was grateful, although I had a bit of a moment. 
So then they wheeled me out in the hallway and I waited and I had my phone. So I played a little bit of Wordle and Connection and uh, Spelling Bee. Do you know that <laughs> app through uh, the New York Times? So I sat there and just passed some time and played some games. And then they took me upstairs and a little bit more waiting in pre-op. And I just, you know, you don't have to know all the details, but just to know it, it went fine. But there's a bit of a waiting. And um, but again, everything went smoothly. You know, somebody came in to put some radioactive dye in me so that they could test the sentinel node. Somebody came in and started an IV. Um, uh, the um, nurse anesthetist came in and Dr. Hansen came in. And I have to share this with you because I don't know. Um, well, at, at this point, it doesn't matter what anybody else believes. But what I have been working on since my diagnosis, because someone said, wow, now your healing begins. I said, no, my healing began the minute I got that diagnosis. And um, so I started changing my diet. Uh, I've been working on eating more plant-based and certainly a ton of vegetables. I've been doing juicing, um, strict celery juice, as well as like these combo juices, which I absolutely love. Um, Stay tuned for some recipes that I'm gonna put out um, and reach out if you want some recipes. I quit drinking, I quit eating, you know, the sugar and the cookies and stuff like that. Not at 100%, but to the extent that I was. And I, we all know how we eat, right? I'm a pretty healthy person, but that was the downfall for me. It always has been. And um, I've been doing a lot of reading and I've been working on breathwork meditation and journaling and just a lot of stuff because it's, I do believe that, um, I mean, our body keeps the score. Our body tells us things. The universe taps us on the shoulder. And so I've been working hard to really change some things. And my prayers were that this would go really well, uh, very smoothly. I told the doctor and the an- anesthesiologist, go, this is going to be your easiest case of the day. But my prayers were that it would go smoothly, but that I, that perhaps they would take it out and they'd say, wow, this really wasn't as bad as we thought it was. Now, I have that appointment this Thursday where I go back to talk to the doctor and um, they do the full pathology and they say if they were able to get clear margins. And she already told me that she took two lymph nodes and they felt really great and no, no concerns there. But my wink from the universe that day came when the doctor, you know, after that whole radiology stuff, they take a picture and then she has it there. The wire is inserted. They do a measurement. I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to take it out around here. And she went over that with me right before they took me back. And she said, okay, so here's the tumor. And um, yeah, it's 0.6 centimeters. That's what it's measuring. And I looked at her. I go, 0.6? I go, when we started this whole process, it was 1.1. And my husband said, do you believe in natural healing and stuff? And the doctor said, sure, I do. And, um, and he's been doing some energy healing on me too. Um, that was my wink from God. Because they were like, you know, yeah, okay, well, you know, they didn't, I don't know, they didn't make a big like, wow, that's amazing. But that was my wink from God to say, see, what you're doing is right. I believe that, I know the tumor didn't get any bigger, and I believe it shrunk. And in two months. So, again, do we have a clinical study? No. But I have my own life study here. And that's what I'm working on because this, this is my life and this is what I'm choosing to do and I'm choosing to live and go forward. And as I read in something that, you know, we can't say that this was my fault, but you know what? It's my responsibility now that I know. It's my responsibility to do the things that I want to do so that I can live. And that's what I'm choosing. And that was my wink from God saying, see, what you're doing is good. It's very overwhelming when I think about it. But it's overwhelming in a good way. I'm like, see, because these changes aren't always easy and they don't always align with your psyche and they don't always align with people around. And, you know, at the end of the day, right, what other people think doesn't matter. But, you know, I also live with people and I, you know, I just I'm not a I'm not a people pleaser. I used to be. But still, it's changes and it's not changes for a couple of months, it's now changes for life, right? And that can be overwhelming sometimes. It can be, it can be rough. But again, I was so grateful for that. And I was like, 
that's awesome. And so they came and they started to take me down the hall. And then she said, I'm just going to give you a little verse set. And I'm like, good. You know, that, that helps to relax you. I asked them if they played any music in the, in the, um, in the surgery room. And they said, sometimes I said, Hey, we'll play, play, play some, uh, country music for me. And then I was out and I woke up in recovery. So, um, you know, that was my, that was my story. Uh, that was my journey. Um, I recovered for a little bit. I had a Nutrigrain bar and some water. And then my husband went and got the car and we headed, we headed home and, um, had some wonderful soup from a friend waiting at home. So it wasn't, I mean, I got down there at noon and I headed out of there at about 6.45 at night. So easy peasy, right? Um, so now I recover. Now I slow down. That's why I chose December. Um, this one doctor that I talked to, the first opinion, she was ready to get me in in October, maybe in November. And I was like, you know what? I want to do it in December because this way... Like my business kind of slows down a little bit, although I'm available still to help and all of that kind of stuff. But it does slow down because people have focus on shopping and getting ready for the holidays. And so it does slow down a little bit before Christmas. And I thought if I have it on the 13th, then I'll have a chance to slow down and won't feel the, um, you know, the push to get out there and go to my meetings and all that kind of stuff. And so I have taken it easy. It's um, just, again, an intentional thing that I'm doing. I've spent some time on the couch uh, watching, getting caught up on The Crown, which I absolutely love. I highly recommend. Um, But I want to, and so I continue to, again, I'll continue to keep you posted on on things and um, things are good. Uh, My pain is pretty much gone and, um, just um, continue to work on recovery and take all my supplements and juicing and all of that rebounding and stuff like that. But I want to just say, hey, thanks for listening. Because again, I know that some so many have been, how are you doing? How are things going? And so I feel like I can turn the microphone on and share this time sitting in my PJs in my office with the sun shining on me, um, sharing with you how the journey's going and um, say that Again, hopefully this helps those that are listening, even if you just want to understand it a little bit more and just know that it's okay. We can get through, we can get through these things. And so I want to kind of just wrap this up by saying, keep going, whatever you're going through. Yeah. The universe gives us things and they always say, God gives us, doesn't give us things we can't handle. I truly believe that because as I reflect back on the last, I don't know, 10, 12 years or so, there were times that I didn't feel as strong as I do today. And I went through those challenges and I learned and I changed some things and, um, and I got stronger. And then this came along (laughs) and I know that because of what I went through, I'm stronger today to go through this. We, I, I truly believe that everything that I've gone through in my life has brought me to today so that I can handle today and that I can handle tomorrow. So whatever you're going through, keep going and knowing that you can do it. You've got it. And you also have an army of people around you that want to help, want to support you. And so don't be afraid to ask for some help. Don't be afraid to speak up. Uh, Don't be afraid of opening yourself up to that vulnerability and saying, you know what, I I need some help or I just need, like I'm scared and can you just listen to me or whatever the case is, but keep going and rely on your friends and family and whoever's around you because they will help, but it's up to you to ask. Um, And you can say, number two, you can say that, yeah, I've got this. And I'm here to tell you that there's sometimes it's like, yeah, I say I got this. And then there's times that it's really hard. And I'm giving, I'm, I'm feeling those feelings. And I want you to feel those feelings too. I'm feeling those feelings and I'm recognizing that. And I'm pulling my journal out and I'm sitting in the front room with a candle and, and feeling those feelings because we have to. I have listened to lots of things about repressed emotions and repressed just avoiding behavior, or avoiding emotions, repressed emotions. I'm doing a lot of reading about that and listening because I believe that there has been some of that in my life, a lot of it. And um, I believe it's coming out 
It impacts our, our, that stress, that repressed emotion, that suppressed, that avoidant behavior. It doesn't do us any good. So make sure you feel it. When you're feeling good, you feel good. And when you need somebody to go laugh with, go find somebody to laugh with. But know that it's there are bad days. There's crappy days. And you should feel those feelings. You should let yourself cry. You should let yourself scream. You should let yourself do whatever. But we've got to feel it. And it is a lot sometimes. And it's okay to recognize that. And number three, again, I made some changes for a couple of months. And as I read in a po- or heard in a podcast yesterday or something, it's got to be some, you got to be, you got to be willing to make some changes for life. It's not just, just like with, if you want to get healthy, if you want to lose a little bit of weight, if you want to sleep better, yeah, you can change things for a couple of months or a couple of weeks or a couple of days, but you really got to commit to the rest of your life because that's you know, the fact is our cells reproduce themselves. We create new cells over and over from time to time. So if I'm looking at, for instance, in my case, if I'm looking at creating healthier cells and starving out the cancer and creating cells that don't mutate, or if, you know, they don't mutate and go rogue into cancer, then I need to keep filling myself with good nutrients, good habits, good sleep, good feelings and thoughts, but not just for a couple of days or a couple of months, it's like for a couple of years. Because I we do have the ability that we can continue to do that. And then we create a healthier body, healthier cells, healthier cells lead to healthier bodies and decreased incidence of reoccurrence and all of that stuff. So I want you to hear that, that yes, make some changes, but stick with it. Because I want you to be selfish. I want you to be selfish with yourself. Because somebody said to me, and I heard this again so much, like, how are we going to choose? What what are choices are we going to make? Are we going to choose to let this destroy us? Or are we going to choose to live? And for me, I choose to live. Yeah, I've been I've been a little scared with this, and I've been a little like, oh my god, I'm sixty years old, and I have cancer, and people die. So, but I'm going to choose to live each and every day for today, because we don't know what's promised tomorrow. So I'm encouraging to think like, what are you, what are you doing? Are you choosing to live? Are you choosing to make the excuses like, oh, that's too hard. I can't do that. Oh, I don't know. I don't really like beats. I don't really like that. Okay. It's up to you. It's up to you to choose. And I encourage you to choose to live and be selfish for yourself and make those choices that you can do so that you live today and enjoy this life that God gave you. And Also, at the end of the day, number four is give yourself a little bit of grace. Because again, I'm working hard to make the changes. And some days it's overwhelming. And some days I'm not so good. And some days I, you know, it's, you know, and but we all need to do that for ourselves. We need to give ourselves grace. We do the best that we can. And it's, and there's, you know, there's so much we can control and so much we can't. So give yourself some grace and work on the things that you can control. And it's like the little things. It's the little habits. It's the micro habits. It's what I've talked about for years. It's the little things that we do each and every day that add up to the big things. So give yourself some grace. Um, you know, just be kind to yourself because, I don't know, again, at the end of the day, I know I haven't always said the kindest words to myself. I haven't always loved myself Um, one thing I, maybe I said this in my first podcast, one thing that I did and I continue to do is tiptoe into the idea of mirror work. And you know, all that means is looking at yourself in the mirror and just looking at yourself in the eyes. I've discovered this a lot in dancing that I don't always look up. I don't always look straight ahead. Sometimes I avoid people's looking at people or I don't look at them directly. I don't look at myself I'm working on it. (laughs) I'm working on it. But when you do that mirror work, you pause. And even if it's when you're brushing your teeth, just look at yourself. Look at yourself in the eyes and give yourself a smile and give yourself a wink and say, I love you. And I continue to do that because we need to continue to love ourselves. We are flawed, flawed people, but we are beautiful people. And we all deserve to be loved and cared for and noticed but it has to first come from ourselves. We need to first love ourselves, care for ourselves, notice ourselves, 
appreciate ourselves and love ourselves. So do that. Let's practice that together. Um, I'm so grateful for you following along with this journey, this journey of this podcast, this journey to joy, um, the journey now that I have. Um, and I'm going to continue to <laughs> spread joy and deliver joy. And I'm working on some more of that stuff in the new year. And I can't wait to continue to share it with you. I can't wait to meet new people that I can share their cancer recovery journey with you. Um, cause there's lots of them. There's so much hope out there. And so if you know somebody that, wants to be, um, wants to share their story, please connect them with me. If you are listening and you're that person, please connect yourself with me. Um, I love to share people's stories as is evidence in the last two and a half years of this podcast. I love to share people's stories because there's magic in the mess of our lives. There is so much uh, hope when we share those stories with others. So please connect them with me. Please stay tuned as I continue to share on this journey that I'm on and um, the joy that we can have and share in our lives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so grateful for all of you. And I will catch you next time on the next episode of this podcast. Be well, make great choices and uh, love to you all. Hey there, ready to live a more joyful life? Considering connecting with someone who can help you? If so, I'd like to be that person. I offer a free consultation where we determine where the chaos is in your life and how you can learn to bring more joy each and every day. Visit my website, moiragorski.com, or simply email me, moira at moiragorski.com, with more joy in the subject line. I look forward to connecting, and I'm here to say, there will always be some chaos, which requires a little juggling, but you can find joy and live your life intentionally filled with that joy. Let me help you on your journey to joy, and that's joy, the journey of you.